Hi everyone, I'm Chris and in this tutorial I want to go over something called spline cage modelling and using the surface modifier to put a surface on your spline cage. Now this is actually a really easy and quick method of modelling and it will save you hours of modelling time as you don't have to push and pull individual vertices on spheres and cubes and what have you and you can produce really complex objects in a really short period of time. So let me just quickly explain to you what spline cage modeling is. Here on the screen we have your basic cylinder and what Max has done is it's drawn the, all of these circles here, separated them evenly and it's drawn these lines up here and then what it's done is it's put a surface in between each segment here. Now what, this is what we're going to do, we're going to draw all of our splines and then we're going to tell Max to put a surface in between them but we are going to create something a little more complex than a cylinder. This here is what we're going to create. You'll find a link to where I found this image in the description. So what we're going to do first off is we're going to create these segments just here and these will be like the circles of our cylinder. So back in 3D Max, start up a new scene. We want to select the shapes and we want to draw a line. And we're just going to create the rough shape. Now, when you're creating anything like this, you will be using reference images on reference planes. As I'm just doing this rough for you, I'm just going to draw it out very, very quickly. But feel free to use your own reference images if you want. Just make those smooth. Okay, and that's going to be the basic shape for our hull. Okay. Now, clone this back. So I'm going to clone another two, so I've got a total of three, and I want a copy, not an instance or a reference, and another one. Okay, now this particular part of the ship gets a bit thicker towards the middle, so I'm just going to make this one just a little bigger like that, and it gets a bit narrower at the back, so just make it a bit narrower, that'll do just fine. Okay, now we need to make them all part of the same shape. So with any one of them selected, we need to come over here under where it says Geometry, click on Attach, and then back in the viewport, click on our other two lines, and they will become part of the same shape. Okay, that's the first part done. Now what we need to do is model it on this perspective. The way the surface modifier works is it looks at the vertices of your shape and it works out where it can put in a surface. So what we need to do is we need to draw a line that goes all the way around, across the front, all the way back and then across and back to where we started. So make sure you know what is what and what's on what angle in your viewport and make sure you can see all of the vertices clearly that you're going to be clicking on. Now. Over here, turn on Vertex Selection, and then under the Geometry tab, you see this button here that says Refine. We want to tick this little box here first that says Connect, and what this will do, when we click on Refine and we start doing this, it will connect the vertices that we're hovering over. So click on Refine, this section gets greyed out, and then we want to click on our first vertice. And when we do that, if this is the first time we've done this, it's asking you if you want to refine or connect only. We actually, for this one, we want connect only. So click on do not show this message again, or you'll get it every single time, and then click on connect only. Now it's actually put the vertice there. So if we click on our next one in the loop, this one here, and then the next one, and then the next one, and all the way round to the back, and then right click and you'll see that it has created another part of our shape. Let me just show you how this has done this. It has drawn vertices but it hasn't actually closed the lines as you can see. So we have three separate vertices in the same place here. So if we control Z put all that back in place because we need these to be in exactly the same place we must make sure if we move one we're going to move them all at the same time otherwise the surface modifier won't recognize it as a closed gap and it won't put a surface between it. 
So rather than having to drag and select over every time, if we come over here and where it says area selection here, we just put a tick in that box. We only really need that at point 0.1 because they're in the same place. And with that selected, when we click on it, it will select all of the vertices in that place. Then we know we're always going to be moving all of the vertices. Now, what you can do is you can refine your vertices. You see we don't have a nice curve at the back here. So what we can do is if we select all of the vertices and I'm going to turn them all into a bezier corner. And then I can start moving these around to get a much nicer curve. If we turn vertex selection mode off for a moment and what we'll do is we'll put the surface modifier on now. So if you come over to the modifier list, drop down, go down to S and put on the surface modifier. Now when you put that on you'll see that it's only put on three segments the reason it's done this is because while we have told it how to work out this angle here, we haven't told it how to work out this bridge over here and this bridge under here. So we need to do that. So come back down to your line, turn it onto vertex. Now if we just drew a line across the top here, and just one under the bottom here, what we would actually end up with is a gap in the middle here because we wouldn't have told it how to work out this little curvature at the back. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to draw all the way around the top, we're going to put a new vertice in here and then we're going to draw all the way under the bottom, another new vertice here and back to where we started again. So again we need to be in our perspective viewport and we need to make sure we can see our loop clearly, we know what is where. So we're going to go across the top, onto that one there, round the bottom, onto this one here, and then back up to here. So again, we want to click on connect and refine, and then start drawing our line. So if we click on our first one, and begin going around. Now when we get to this gap here, where there's no vertice for us to click on, if we hover over the line roughly where we think it should go and click and it puts a vertice in for us and we can then carry on round we can do the same again at the front make sure we don't click here where it could end up on this circle rather than this arc so we'll click here new vertice there and then click back where we started now you don't need to worry about this being too particularly neat while you're doing that because you can always begin to edit it. Now coming into the top viewport we know we want this to go straight down the middle so we can just begin to move the vertices about again. So this is the vertice at the front of our ship. Okay so we want to pull that out just a little bit like that. This one is the one at the back of the ship we're going to straighten that up, put it out a bit, we're just going to change the curve, let's change that to that, and there we go. Now when we click off of this and come back up to the surface modifier, you will see that we have the basics for our shape. You may find that when you put the surface modifier on your model is completely black and that will be because of this flip normals over here. Just to show you, if you have a completely black model when you look around it it's because Max has put the normals around the wrong way. Check this flip normals and there you have your outer shell. Okay that's it for this tutorial. Thank you.